are on our way to get on to Mount Ive itself. the Mount Ive station property which is 900 square kilometers that's a massive place there's quite a number of four-wheel drive tracks we can do um, and we are on our way to get on to Mount Ive itself to so drive all the way up to Mount Ive and it's right over there um, get right to the top and then get a I believe the view of the entire station and the property itself is quite breathtaking and uh, so that's the plan right now now when you get to the station you've got to pay to drive on these tracks um, so you know you've got to make sure you've done that and some of the tracks requires a key so once you make the payment you get yourself the key and then from there you you can basically got access to all these places That's hard, isn't it? Yeah, you would have never opened the gate. It's really hard. Somebody's put it really tight. Then they closed it behind it. Is it? Yeah. How do you put really... How do you close really hard? Yeah, you got to leave a little bit of slack on the chain. I've also been told when you get to the top of Mount Ive, you do get a full strength Telstra signal. Only Telstra. Um, so, uh, whereas when you're at the station and not that you want signal when you're on a holiday but uh, if you do want to check on things now and then there is a Wi-Fi connection available at um, the station not very reliable and at best it's a very weak signal uh, whereas I've been told when you get up to Mount Ive summit you do get a full strength signal Go up there, you know, do a bit of walking. Boy! Sorry. Sorry. And Jesus. do some recording for me. Wait, Johnny is my camera person and she doesn't yeah, enjoy I'm it. I'm always your camera person. Which I'm grateful for. Johnny has done a four wheel drive training course. And she's pretty good at driving these tracks, but uh, I think the pro problem she has is because she's very petite. Um, sometimes when you're going up steep inclines, she doesn't see that too well, particularly over the bonnet. Uh, so that kind of you know, loses a bit of confidence because of that. It's not a terribly difficult track, it's just it's a steep climb at the same time the um, very rocky and loose shale so it can be a bit of a pain apart from that it's, it's not very difficult at all. There is quite a lot of tracks you can do in this property um, you pick and choose but you know when we got here the, 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 the sereneness just got to us and we We've just been lazy and getting up late in the morning, you know, just basically chilling, you know, have a big breakfast, which we take for granted in, uh, I mean, we don't do really uh, when you're in the city, you know, you're always, I mean, rushing from one thing or to the other. We work from home and you'd think that, 
you know, we we got the luxury of you know living life that way, but we still don't because work is in our in our minds. And uh, whereas when you come out here, it's just it's just something else. Time stops. No internet. Well, if you've got your tire pressures low enough, then it, it's really you no. Know, it doesn't do. If you've got hard pressures, you don't. Uh, we, we, you can do some damage, but like us, we've got it down to. We've got it down to 32. The station actually recommends 30 psi, but I've got it down to 32. And, uh, so why don't you drop it to 30? No. I don't see these these tires that I've, we've got. It's pretty tough. It's not easy being a YouTuber and having don't have your own film crew, even during tough tracks like this you can stop get down or, or get a journey out there stop get those angles because we're trying we're trying to deliver much of the experience and share with you uh, as we possibly can so you stop halfway change the camera angles get a shot get about a minute maybe two worth of footage and then back again and we'll do that a little bit later again so a lot of work, a lot of work goes into it. So, uh, and, and the reward we get, apart from sharing information with the rest of you, is the reward we get is the fact that you watch it uh, and, and leave comments behind. Uh, that's the reward we get, so really appreciate it. But you also get a bit of an insight of to what, not just us, but YouTubers in general go through. Especially when you're doing touring um, and off-road touring where the terrain can be a bit challenging like it is right now but we still gotta deliver ah. so as it gets steeper it gets rockier and uh, just to make it a bit easier on the vehicle I'm gonna go into low range Okay, we could have driven all the way to the top, a lot of step ups, and uh, we decided we're just going to park it here. It just, uh, not that it cannot be done, it's, it's not so difficult, just annoying step ups. And I thought, well, it's maybe about 100 meters walk to the summit. So we just decided to walk. It's a lot easier. And you still get really beautiful views from down where the vehicle is parked uh, but uh, yeah, we could do with the exercise as well so what the heck <laughs> we'll walk I 
think it's time for another breakfast. <laughs> yeah. We just had breakfast like what? An hour and a half ago? Two? That's what good relaxed holidays does. Gives you a bloody good appetite. We are at the top. It's about 200 meters walk. Nothing too serious. You know what it says, right? We have got so dependent on this connectivity. Okay. It's a talking point. Oh, there's signal up there. Nobody says, hey, go and check out the views, isn't it? Well, some do. I'm being a bit biased. Don't be an old man. Okay, keep up I'm not with trying technology. To be, no, you want to get away from technology. I want to be completely out off grid. Yeah. I know, but... But every, almost every other person we spoke to, they oh, go up to Mount Ives Summit, you get signal. Why? They didn't Why? say go up to Mount Rajasthan. Yeah, you said they you... They said when you go there, you get full signal. Yeah, yeah. So, so, oh, okay, all right. So when you go there, you get full signal. What's, what if we just replace that with when you go there, you get breathtaking scenery and views. And forget the signal part. Huh? Exactly. All right, going down, I am going to go on low range. A bit of engine braking would be very helpful. And it started raining, so it is going to be a bit slippery, I would think. Which is kind of a bummer because it was really nice out here until the rain came down. The problem with these step ups is when you're going up, you can actually see where the step is. But when you're going down, it's not so easy. Look at that airstrip. Quite a long airstrip. Most of these stations they have landing strips uh, and that's for use by the station owners and also an uh, important sort of uh, network of landing strips for the Royal Flying Doctor. And um, now I, I hate to think if it, if it wasn't for the Royal Flying Doctor how these remote communities would get, you know, health access. It's um, pretty remote out here. It's not like you can you know, dial triple zero and get an ambulance out here. It's not going to happen. So the Royal Flying Doctor is that the service is just very, very invaluable. bad enough having to go up or down this rocky surface and then there is also these switchbacks to deal with. So 
Okay, there's a bad rock there, so I don't want to go that over that. I remember sometime many years ago, back in Africa, we did a four-wheel drive course, and it was actually done by a friend of ours, highly, highly experienced off-roader, and uh, to, to teach us about wheel placement. And he used to always say you should be able to get your wheel placement right without having a spotter and the reason for that is he says sometimes you could be traveling on your own and if you came across uh, a terrain where you know you you had to really work hard to navigate it and you didn't have a spotter because you're traveling on your own what do you do you can't say well i've got no spotter you so what he would do was he would take us to this in that course he would take us to this really really rough terrain and he would have these empty cans of drink you know like, like a coke or fanta and um, he would place them along the track and a stretch of about 200 meters he would place them in awkward positions and the training was we had to hit those cans with the wheel that he instructs us to. So for example, you could be driving down and he'll say, hit that can on the left with your right wheel or right front wheel. And that's exactly what we had to do. Um, oops. And that was so valuable. Um, and that sort of gave us a good training as to how to try and get wheel placement right without the need of a spotter. You did that course, did you? With Bobby? Yeah. So Bobby, if you're watching, we are very grateful. Another important thing to be aware of uh, when you're going over rough terrain like this and there's a lot of rocks um, is to know your vehicle's diffs, where exactly the diffs are located because the diffs, especially if you've got live axle four-wheel drives like our 80 series, the diffs are not always smack in the middle, they can be off-center. Um, so. It is very important and also, I mean, in some vehicles, the front diff could be smack in the middle, the rear diff could be off-center or the other way around. Um, so it, it is very important to know where your diffs are because as much as you get in your wheel placement right, you also got to make sure you don't hit anything with your diffs. Mm -hmm. 